Scripture. I'm Jordan Shambly, joined by Wesley Wildman, and today in studio we have a guest with us. She's been on the radio program before, Hannah Harrison. It's so great to have you. It's great to be here. Yeah, yeah. It's always a a, a pleasure to have you here, and uh, you've written for us before, both on the website and in a and in a previous magazine. I have. So um, we love having our writers on to discuss their articles. Um, lots of great insight that we get. Right. Yeah. I just want to know if her voice for y'all, young comment. <laughs> below on a youtube channel or facebook if her, <laughs> if her voice matched her writing oh yeah you know because you always talk about you know where their voice didn't match I've their face this. yeah you know uh -huh. now i'm curious radio, so what do you think do, wesley does i want to know yes <laughs> it does i think so i think your voice is just like what i would have thought it would have been that's so. funny that's funny uh yeah I, I i've honestly when i when i read my own articles like i i, I don't know like i have I guess my voice, but when I read someone else's articles, sometimes it swaps out for Morgan Freeman, you know. Sure, it goes interchange. Yeah, <laughs> it, all those. That's what I want. I want my voice to sound like Morgan Freeman. Yes, there at least go. in writing, yeah. <laughs> Maybe not in person. <laughs> yeah, not in person. <laughs> well, y'all can blame me for this. Right, yeah, a little tangent, yeah. Well, uh, this is an exciting episode because we're going to continue sort of our discussion um, from last episode when we unveiled, introduced for the first time on our radio program slash podcast – the first engaged biannual. Mm -hmm. This is technically volume four because right. of the fourth magazine we put out, but this is the first biannual magazine we put out. This is the spring 2020 magazine. Available now. Uh, go to engagemagazine.net, uh, hit the button at the top that says magazine, and you can sign up there. And um, I'm just going to be Captain Obvious this yes. program. I'm just going to say it up front. <laughs> biannual means you can expect one twice a year. Twice a year. Yeah. So when's the next one? It's coming out in the fall. Coming out in the fall. Yeah, we're working on so that right now. This is the spring edition. This is the spring edition, and it's it's beautiful. I'm I'm very happy with this one. Yeah, it looks uh, great. Our, our team has come together and just really just outdone themselves this year. Um, it's a great looking magazine, and it's just full of articles that, um, on the theme like we said in the last episode, on the theme of eternity, uh, living in light of eternity. How does that inform every aspect of our lives? And we've really dug into that theme and fleshed out a, a, a wonderful magazine for you guys to read and enjoy and hopefully benefit from. So like we said, go to engagemagazine.net, hit the link at the top that says magazine and sign up there and send us your thoughts at engagefaq at afa.net. We want to hear from you guys. Yeah, because there may be some topics that we, you may have seen us covered in our recent radio programs, mm -hmm. but we haven't cut, covered in written print. Yeah. Written print. No, it makes sense. Is that to right? Me. Yeah. That good for you. <laughs> yeah. And you and you may want us to cover in the following edition. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we'd love to hear back from you on that. So absolutely. So uh, Hannah, you wrote an article for this magazine, I did. and it's a it's a great article. It's uh, one of the shorter ones, but and it's towards the end of the magazine because we save the best for last, right? There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, well done, that was Jordan. a good save, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, but it's it. The title of the article is um, something that I don't think a lot of people realize that they've thought about before mm -hmm. uh, are Christians free to dream um, and I know this from personal experience as, as a uh, as a teenage Christian growing up I had these ideas of everybody everybody has the ideas of like the ambitions that we have for our life what do we want to be when we grow up that kind of thing whether that that's um, I want to go to school get this degree and have this job have this kind of career or I want to marry this person have a family or whatever that looks like a lot of Christians kind of subconsciously wrestle with the the notion of is this okay for me to feel this way am i is it all right for me to go ahead and set out a path for myself to follow or to dream about these things mm -hmm. that might come and so uh what what do you think hannah i mean you wrote the article on this so uh, what what did you think um when you were coming when I you think were processing the answer this? is yeah. yes and no <laughs> yes and no that's good yeah because um one of the verses that i used in the article so i'm not going to spoil it for you guys mm -hmm. um but it was um psalm 30 37 mm -hmm. 4 and it says delight yourself also in the lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart and so really what i think about dreams is i think we should be so focused on the lord that we should want what he wants for our life and as long as our dreams align with that i i think 
that's great. Yeah. If it's not and it's something that we're just kind of chasing on our own whim, mm-hmm. I think that's when you should start taking it into perspective and think, uh, maybe this isn't what the Lord wants me to do. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, in that sense, it's probably not very biblical. Right, yeah. And, and that, that's a great verse to bring up, too, because it's one of those verses that have been taken out of context so many mm-hmm. times. Um, because everybody, like, we, we get excited when we say, God will give you the desires of your heart. And you're like, that's really? Second, that's second am I going to really have, an, am I gonna have a Tesla when I drive into my driveway, you know, when, yes. later on today? Like, that, that sounds great to me. I mean, um, but obviously that's not what it, God's not a genie in a bottle that right. we can uh, – that we can approach and with, with the right words, we can kind of get him to do the things that we want him sure. to do for us. Um, but at the same time, the Bible, it does say what it says, you know, mm-hmm. uh, he, he does, he wants to give us the desire, the, the, the desires of our heart. He is a good father. We are his children. I mean, what kind of a father would in a cruel kind of, uh, um, a mean kind of way, uh, refuse the desires of his children. Sure. Um, now, I, I have kids, and I, I can't think of what, I mean, obviously there are times my, my young son comes up and he wants some candy sure. you know, from the from the secret stash that's not so secret. Kid candy, you know? no way. Kid and candy, <laughs> and, same and, 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 and I'm like, that's not the best thing for you right now, or maybe maybe later, you know, maybe sure. use it to, as an incentive to right. do something that he, you know, cleaned his room or whatever. Um, but obviously there are times where I don't I don't just try, try to spoil my children, you know, that, that would be irresponsible for me. Um, and God's the same way. He, d- he, he knows our nature. I mean, as we sure. all do, we, we get spoiled. We, we, um, we are selfish by nature. Mm-hmm. Um, and so God doesn't want to nurture that in us. So he doesn't give us just everything that we want. Exactly. Um, but as a good father, there are things that he does want to give us. Um, he does want what is best for us. He does want us to be able to enjoy him. And I think that's the key here is that the best thing for us is himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and that's a good uh, verse to memorize, too. Mm-hmm. I know that I took time to memorize that when I was trying to decide or trying to decide or find a good spouse. Mm-hmm. And so uh, now your particular article, it focuses on maybe occupation dreams or just dreams in general. I think it's just, just dreams, dreams in, in general. general. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so then there you go. I was specifically applying that to mm-hmm. my spouse, and I realized, wait a minute, in praying that or in reading that, I realize, wait, okay, there has to be a priority here then. Right. Right. And so that's when you begin to make that adjustment, that shift to what are the priorities? Is this something I want Mm -hmm. or is this something God wants? And how can we go about uh, uh, making adjustments in your life or my life to fit that which is pleasing to God? Mm -hmm. Um, And, of course, in that particular situation, I've shared this before on our program, but I begin to look at, Proverbs 31, what it looks like in a good spouse and so, or a good wife. So I begin to pray those things, look for those things in uh, somebody that I would date. So that was yeah. how I went about that process. I know that's a little sidetracked from the topic at hand, but that's the process I went using this particular passage of Scripture. Yeah. So and I'm so grateful for that. And I also think on the topic of the Proverbs 31, wa- mm-hmm. of Proverbs 31 wife mm-hmm. is, um, you know, you talked about maybe – applying this to occupation mm-hmm. she was a hard worker right I mean, she went exactly. out and she provided for her family and mm-hmm. her husband and her kids mm-hmm. and so you know i think that could be the same thing absolutely so yeah. hey the new testament uh says it like this it says that in matthew six thirty three, it says seek first the kingdom of god and his mm-hmm. righteousness and all these things will be added to you jesus said that mm-hmm. yeah and so uh just the idea that um that we there are Things that are worthy of desiring that are that may be a dual purpose. They ulti- they glorify God, but they also satisfy some things that you would want or you like to do. Yeah. Or some things you like to see. But it's important though to make sure that those priorities are in order. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And and one of the it, this really fits very well into the theme of this whole magazine. And I, and I hope pe- when when people read through this that they they get that that um your individual lives have a lot to do with eternity i mean if you look at the bible we are uh we as christians are promised eternal life um and that's a real thing i know that that's easy to kind of have in your mind in theory but really what that i mean that means what it what it says i mean you will not have a last day like you will continue and and one day you will be in the presence of god for all of eternity Mm -hmm. whatever that looks like and that's a great mystery to us um, but the idea of okay, so are we are we then able to have ambitions? Are we able then to have desires? 
I was listening to um, my audio Bible for uh, for uh, um, quiet time the other day, and I was listening to Ecclesiastes. And the first two chapters of Ecclesiastes are kind of a slap in the face to um, to people who kind of have that 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 um, gravitation towards those earthly desires and just having like worldly um, ambitions. Mm-hmm. And it, because the preacher and that Solomon is saying everything is worthless. <laughs> yep. It's all all of it's just chasing after wind. He, and he's looking at he he's considering the ways of you know the, the people who are working hard and they're <laughs> they're gathering all this wealth to himself and they're and they're and they're building an empire and he's doing that and he's like it's all worthless because they're going to die or I'm going to die right. and all of this is going to go to the next person. Sure. Right. So uh, it, it, it's it's but when you look at it through the lens of eternity um and what the desires of your heart should then become is uh, really living after God, mm-hmm. living for God and desiring God. Um, and and that just, that's not this sort of ethereal kind of like, oh, yes, you know, you're sitting before God and you're in this sort of reverent attitude necessarily, right. but that in every aspect of your life. So um, right after li- listening to Lamentations, or oh, I'm sorry, it's about the same thing, but Ecclesiastes, <laughs> yeah. I, went, I, went, I went, brushed my teeth for the day and I was thinking, with the attitude of Ecclesiastes, why am I even doing them? <laughs> uh, they're all going to fall out anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, one day, one day, I'm not going to have teeth. Why, why even brush them right, right now? Right. But, <laughs> but I mean, that's a funny thought to have. But just in the state of mind, I went. I was kind of sleeping. I was like, sure. why, why even do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Especially, it's probably something you could, you know, <laughs> skip. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but um, especially but, if you just ate ice cream. It takes the flavor out. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or some type of or, dessert. Yeah, are you, you know brush your teeth about? and it tastes bad? Yeah, I can't it tastes stand bad. that. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I <laughs> just <laughs> had. Yeah, so why even do it? I, I mean, 12 <laughs> Oreos. It's all vanity, I mean, right? The dentist I mean, we're going to die. For it. Uh, but, but think about this. I mean, if even your teeth, even brushing your teeth, something as silly as that, you're doing that for the glory of God. Mm. Right. Um, whatever you're your hands are to your do, teeth. do all to the glory <laughs> of God. This is, stewarding them. This is true, yeah. though. I mean, well, hold on th- so all, in everything, in all of these small, seemingly insignificant things, that desire to live to God, to live to his glory, I want to ha- be able to have a healthy body to be able to carry out the work that God wanted sure. me right. to carry out. And that, and that includes everything from me brushing my teeth to me just eating healthy and, be, sure. and being able to do things. Um, but that all is wrapped up in the desire to God. It really informs every aspect of life. There's nothing that it doesn't touch. Right. And, e- and even also, like, if your desires are lined up with what the Lord wants, you were talking about how um, in Ecclesiastes, you know, it goes to the next generation. Mm-hmm. You're going to be remembered one way or the other. Yeah. And so if you live out a life that is following and pleasing to the Lord, other people are going to notice it. Your kids are going to notice mm-hmm. it. Your church members, your family, whoever. Um, and I think that's something to keep in mind as you daily go through that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, that's a good Bible verse I was mentioning about um, learning or memorizing. Yeah. That's one that my son, my, he's four, he's got that memorized for that reason. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. delight yourself in the Lord, and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Yeah. Hey, I, you have something to say? I was going to ask Hannah. Oh, a question. You go ahead. Yeah. Okay. All right, Hannah. Here's the, here's the first question. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the first question. So <laughs> what you're implying here is that it is possible. And what the scripture's implying is that it's possible to have or want or desire a good thing, mm-hmm. but it not be God's thing. God's thing. Yes. Yep. That's what I'm implying. So what? what so what would that look like? Give me an example. Okay. Because I've experienced this in my own life, so I know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Well, we'll just use the topic of a spouse okay. since you've led yeah. into that. There we go. Um. <laughs> You know, I've dated several people in my life before, and growing up, I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be the one. I'm going to marry him. We're going to live happily ever after. And come to find out, I mean, it wasn't a bad thing. He wasn't a bad person, or we didn't do bad things. But Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that wasn't who the Lord had for me. And so sometimes I think back to, well, what if, where would I be in 20 years if I was with that person? Right. And I don't think that it would have been something that would have brought the Lord mm-hmm. um, glory. Right. And so mm-hmm. I think that's very important. I also think your career is important. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking about it the other night, just how I actually ended up at AFA. And it's totally a God thing, <laughs> yeah. just following him mm-hmm. through the end. But, you know, not that I couldn't glorify God if right. I wasn't in another position. Certainly. But he's placed us in our certain positions for a certain reason. Mm-hmm. Like in Esther, um, you are made for such a time as this. Mm-hmm. And I truly believe that for each of the situations that the Lord leads us to. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, and that's 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 great. I appreciate you sharing that, and that's a point that I wanted to bring up uh, as I was scanning through your article because 
Uh, there was a time in my life where God specifically uh, showed me that I was doing a good thing and it wasn't necessarily his thing or right. a good thing in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, and that was when I was doing, I was involved in four or five different ministries, um, uh, just every day wake up doing some type of ministry. And I never was concerned about how we were doing ministry. Right. Was never really concerned about uh, how much um, I was actually investing mm -hmm. in each right. ministry. Uh, and then, of course, my friends, family, and everything else was like all the way down the list. And so I remember asking the Lord, um, or, or Him revealing to me, "Wait!" And I can't. And I, I remember responding, going, "What? But I'm doing mm -hmm. all these good things. Yeah. I'm doing mm -hmm. these good things." But what ultimately came out of it is I learned that I needed to be focused mm -hmm. and invested on one thing really well. Mm -hmm. Right and not all these other things yeah and so i uh, began to uh seek the lord ask him what some kind of helped me prioritize mm -hmm. my life and that was the first time up until that point that i'd actually asked him right or prayed about yeah. being involved in That's all good. these different things so i went back to enlighten myself in the lord putting him first and then he began to show me some specific desires some specific mm -hmm. uh, passions and, and gifts that i had mm -hmm. in a specific ministry in this case it would be uh with young men without dads right mm -hmm. yeah and that was where i began to really focus my ministry right. on and helping out and that was just one example where there's a good thing i was doing a good thing mm -hmm. but it wasn't what the lord right. had for me right and, th and that's really great to bring up too because um if, if we if we're left to our kind of our own devices um like like you found wesley we're kind of like scatterbrained a little bit because mm -hmm. we want everything sure i mean yeah. we, we i mean e even if they're good things where you want you want to use your talents to glorify god uh, you can it just kind of left to, to navigate this on your own without leaning on the lord's wisdom you're just like okay i'm going to do all the things right. and i'm just going to like you know throw myself at it mm -hmm. and if we allow god to guide our steps we might realize okay well he wants me in a specific place I'm doing a specific thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, there's a lot of wisdom in that. And it's okay for us not to have that urgency um, of, well, I want to serve God, you know, in every regard. Right. Because, I mean, he's, I mean, he's God. Like, he, mm -hmm. he's not waiting for you. You know, he's sure. not, everything's right. not on hold until you do, you know, your right. chore for the day. Exactly. Like, he's God. I mean, he, he's got this. Right. And you're obeying him. It's so funny because I knew growing up I wanted to be some kind of mission, some mm -hmm. kind of mission field. I was going to school to be a logger. Oh, an wow. international lawyer. <laughs> I have an English degree. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, yeah. and, but through that process, mm -hmm. the Lord just kept showing me, no, Hannah, I, no, I don't, I don't want you in Africa or, wow. or Las Vegas yeah. was one of the places that I, I spent a lot of time ministering. And, you know, now I get to write, but I yeah. get to write and it, and it be in the homes and mm -hmm. other people see it, America's families, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's so cool um, how the Lord is faithful when yeah. we follow him and we, we do seek um, his will instead of oh, our Oh, absolutely. Own. I mean, he, he always, he always knows best right. and, and he's, he's sovereign over the situation. So we can really have a lot of rest in that. Mm -hmm. um, one question I do want to ask you about. Uh, the desire following de desires okay um so because we know that we should not just kind of blindly go after mm -hmm. every just every little whim of our heart does that mean then that we we sit still and we have no desires until we see the writing in the sky that says god god oh, tells us you question. need you need to desire this thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um i would say no yeah <laughs> <laughs> good answer <laughs> So, Good so, answer. so h h what, what should we say to that person who feels that kind of paralysis? Cause I felt that too, oh, yeah. where That's I'm like, fabulous question. <laughs> like, yeah. What's like, yeah, I'll answer that one. so like, because, because I, I, before I dated my wife, I was like, I really want to date her, right. And, right. but I was like, but I know that God has a plan for my life. And how do I know this is a part of it? And, and, and mm -hmm. if I go after this, you know, and I pray about it, but I haven't like heard the voice from this, from this, the heavens, you know, and the light beam falling on her. Yes, this is the one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what What do we say to that person who's in that situation that has that like, okay, I can't move forward? Sure. That's a paralyzing uh, oh, yeah. position to be in. <laughs> oh, yes. And that is what Satan would want mm -hmm. position you be in because you're very ineffective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would say even in my situation where I said I was doing multiple different things and but the but if you back up, I was doing multiple different things mm -hmm. for right. God to show me what the yeah. one thing he wanted me mm -hmm. to do. Yes. So I wouldn't ever uh, 
you wouldn't ever want to be in that position uh, for very long. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we all get in that position at some point. But uh, the idea is to f obey the scripture here, and that's to mm -hmm. light yourself in the Lord is what it says in the Old Testament. New Testament, it says seek first the kingdom of God. Same thing. If you're doing that and you're seeking that, then he will reveal to you mm -hmm. that which right. um, he would have you yeah. on, on the particular subject at hand, whether it be an occupation, whether it be a uh, spouse, whether it be yeah. um, whatever it may be. Right. He'll reveal to you that what he wants you to, to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he does so uh, quickly and sometimes he does so over time. Mm -hmm. And um, But the idea is to be moving forward. Yes. Uh, uh, being obedient. And if nothing else, you're every day you're fulfilling the Great Commission. Right. You know, yeah. you're glorifying mm -hmm. God, you're, you're serving God, serving others. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's important. Hey, I'll give you all one more. Yeah. So one yeah. more illustration here. Okay. Um, so in, in high, no, in college. In college, my sophomore or junior year in college, um, I was like, okay, I'm ready to get this thing done. <laughs> I'm ready to move on. <laughs> we all that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ready to move on. I uh, had to struggle with one of my counselors as far as keeping my uh, classes. Mm -hmm. What do you call those? Class counselors? What do you call um, them? Student counselors. Advisors. Advisors. Yeah. Uh -huh. There you go. Advisors. It's been a long time. Yeah. It's been a long time. <laughs> for sure. The advisors. Uh, and so I made, uh, took some classes that I didn't need. Mm -hmm. uh, made a C average in some classes that I needed a B in. That mm -hmm. I passed them though. That's good. <laughs> so I did. So long story yeah. short, it ended up taking me like mm -hmm. five years, five and a half years, and wow. so I was just Ooh. ready for this thing to be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as as ready as I was ready, as ready as I was wanting it to be done, mm -hmm. uh, I had all kind of things, uh, occupations in my mind or jobs that I was pursuing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, or not pursuing, but wanting to do. I was really passionate about landscape landscape architecture. Mm -hmm. I was really passionate about coaching. I was. Uh, there for a season I was considering pastoring mm -hmm. and then uh, also I'd spent my whole life summers and other times during holidays working at AFA mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um, there was no engaged magazine then no yeah <laughs> uh, and so I was working uh, work for AFA so I knew all these and I was and I was equally as passionate equally mm -hmm. liked them all mm -hmm. uh, they all I had some area of skill or gift that I could I could give mm -hmm. right to those and so uh, what I did was and this may go to answering your question about uh, what do you do about, right. you know, if you don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. I wrote them down, mm -hmm. and uh, I knew that I had three months to make a decision. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, my particular, I had a timeline, because I'm graduating on yeah. this date, okay? Gotta <laughs> so I got to do one. <laughs> so I knew that I had three months uh -huh. at the time that I wrote them all out, and then the graduation date, and I began to pray and pray and ask the Lord what he would have me to do. And for me personally, asking the Lord those things and seeking first the kingdom of God, delighting myself in the Lord, and he'll give me the desires of my heart. It could not have been for me particularly more obvious what I was supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. and that was to be working at AFA. And seven years later, now vice president of outreach at AFA mm -hmm. and help oversee uh, the magazine here, Engage Magazine, and could not have progressed and grown and done the things that I've done without being obedient to him and it was so evident to me I mean through people's conversations to me through um, circumstances that fell into place mm -hmm. it was that obvious that I was supposed to be here and I that was just a, and that may not work for everybody but writing it down praying about it and mm -hmm. God will reveal to you yeah and I mean like like you said taking steps forward in obedience um, I, I remember kind of how I got out of that paralysis myself of just being like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, some, somebody wise in my life, I don't, I don't remember who it was. It was probably a pastor. Um, was basically, it was probably me. Yeah, I mean, it was probably <laughs> it was Wesley, Wesley, to be honest. <laughs> let's, um, be honest. let's just say it was Wesley right. then. Um, but somebody, somebody told me, look, you can take a step and just ask yourself, is this disobedience? And if it's mm, not, you're free you to take that step. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just, just Good, yeah. start walking and mm -hmm. make sure you're not in sin. Mm-hmm. And I mean that. I mean that. And it simplified it so much in my Absolutely. life because, like, f suddenly I, I saw life as a child of God is not a life of restriction. It's a life of freedom. Absolutely. Right. Because a, a lot of times we can feel like we're we're <laughs> like sheep in a fenced in kind of area, and there's a wide open land mm -hmm. around us. When actuality, it's the complete opposite, opposite of that. Yeah. The dangerous parts are fenced off, and everything else is wide open and free. Mm -hmm. um, so for somebody in that situation who feels like maybe they don't know what to do or if they're free to desire something, you're free to desire something as long as it's not sin. 
Yep. If, 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 and if you if you need to pray about that, you can pray about that. But as long as you're sure that you're not in sin, you can go in that direction, mm-hmm. and God will let you know, in His own time, whether or not that is the right, right direction for you. I mean, you're not going to you're not going to be able to live outside of the will of God for very long and be happy. <laughs> no, that's sure. for sure. Yeah. Uh, you go to engagemagazine.net, mm-hmm. click the tab magazine, and you can sign up or register for our free first ever biannual yes. magazine. We'd love to send that to you. Hopefully, we'll get that to you yeah. within just a couple. Of, are you are you making fun of me? I'm trying <laughs> to give a pitch over here. Okay. <laughs> we're not making fun we're, of we're just excited, excited over you're, here. I'm so excited. <laughs> People are going to read my article, Wesley. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and the thing was, I was actually getting it out clearly. Normally, when no, I start doing it. Okay, I got it. I was over here being like, this sounds so great. I'm like, I'm yes. excited for people to Good. to see this thing because yes. like we work, we work so hard <laughs> on it. And yes, it looks so so yeah. great. Um, and if you go to the very back, <laughs> mm-hmm. because we saved the best for last, you're going to find the article which we have been discussing right. and the complete um, uh, points or complete mm-hmm. uh, story yeah. of what Hannah Harrison shares with us today. And yeah. she gives a, she gives some more insight and some more conclusions on mm-hmm. are Christians free to dream? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so please check it out, and uh, again, just let us know what you think. If you get That's it, what I'm gonna do when you're talking. Yeah, okay. yeah. So he's <laughs> furiously flipping through the pages, you know, gaining all the wisdom that's inside. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I appreciate you, Hannah, coming on the yeah, show. Yeah, thanks for it, having me. Thanks yeah. for letting me write. Well, I, well and we're gonna ask you to write again. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, so stay tuned for that. Um, and thank you all for listening to this episode. Um, this magazine. Um, to me is one of the best things that we've produced yes. as Engage Magazine and I am personally just very proud and excited to mm-hmm. to share this with everyone and I, I hope that you all read it because you've been with us on this journey for we're, we're five years old now yeah and we're limited yeah. to this. we only have so many in <laughs> right, stock and yeah. I think we've already uh, given out about 1500 so yeah wow. yeah so so get them all that you can because they've been going out pretty pretty yep. quickly we so, only do one order yeah so p- please do that um, Engage Magazine Dot net, um, and as always, share truth and plus scripture. We'll see you next week.